Hi, in the previous lecture, I showed you how to calibrate or compensate the probes so that they do not distort the signal that is coming through in an unpredictable way. Of course, the oscilloscope itself contains sensitive electronics and it itself needs to be calibrated just like the probe does. Most oscilloscopes have a routine that you can invoke that uh, is used to self-calibrate. Uh, in my case, I'm going to show you how that looks like on this particular oscilloscope. Uh, one thing to remember is that before you invoke this self-calibration routine or process, you should turn on the oscilloscope and let it run for about half an hour so that all its internal, especially analog electronics, uh, become warm enough to the temperature that is appropriate for its operation. So it's not too cold, for example, if you just turn it on and go straight into doing a calibration. So turn it on, let it warm up at its normal operating temperature, and then go ahead with the calibration process. So on this regal model, the calibration process can be invoked by going to the utility menu. And then down here, you'll see uh, the self calibration menu, bring that up. And then you get a notice saying that you must disconnect any probes. So there is no input signal. And when you're ready, press the start button that will begin the process of self-calibration. It goes without saying that while this is happening, uh, make sure that you don't disrupt the power to the oscilloscope, you don't turn it off, you don't plug anything else in it to potentially um, d disrupt the calibration process. So this is going to take about 10, 15 minutes. And um, let's fast forward the process and come back once the process is complete. And that's about it. About 15 minutes later, the calibration is complete. And remember prior to that, I calibrated the probes. So with these two things, we are good to go and start making some measurements. <laughs>